So I'm going to show you three different ways to make a handle. I think that's on. I'm not sure, but okay. So we're going to make um, a slab handle, a coil handle, and a pulled handle. I'm going to start with the slab handle. So if you're going to make a slab handle, um, you would roll out a slab, and I would say this should be not super thick. So um, I just rolled it out by hand so you can see how thick this is. Um, not super thick, but maybe a little thicker than your, your mug because that's awfully thin. And if you had a handle that was as thin as the mugs are, um, you know, it might be too delicate. You have to make sure your handle is um, is strong. So um, I'm going to take that and then I'm going to use a ruler for my width here. I'm going to lay a ruler on top of it. I'm going to use that as my width. So I'm going to cut out this, um, this handle slab. Um, you notice I made it kind of long. I made this, let's see, how long is this? This is about seven inches long, seven to eight inches long. Um, usually I would say you need at least six inches. That gives you kind of a little extra to play with. Um, yeah. Not really sure. Oh, there it is. Okay. I need to make sure I have my cylinder handy for my handle. You should not do this necessarily, but I'm going to just have my cylinder out so I can demonstrate. Okay. So got my, got my cylinder. So I, I cut out. A slab it's a nice even slab um, and my goal is going to be to make sure that when I hold this handle that it is comfortable like this has really sharp edges right now so what I'm going to do and get a good demonstration okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my sponge not a ton of moisture and I'm gonna kind of bevel the ends but with a sponge so I'm gonna push on this side so that it, instead of that straight 90 degree, it's kind of gonna be rounded. And I'm gonna do that on the other side. So now that side is rounded. I'm gonna give it a couple swipes to make this nice and smooth. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Go over the center, go over the, the edges, and then that was funny. Um, and then you might even kind of just smooth out those sides. You just want those ends, those edges to be nice and comfortable. Okay, so I got my, my handle here. And then to attach it, what you're going to do is you're going to fold under the top. So you're going to attach it here and make like an ear shape, basically. And you want everywhere that your, your handle joins the mug to be really, really strong. So when I'm attaching this handle, I'm going to first take a look and see like what, what shape is it going to be. I want to make sure that where I attach the bottom here, it's not going to be too thin. And I'm going to make sure I have a little extra clay up here where I'm going to attach the top. And then a lot of times what I will do is once I get it into my shape that I want, I'm going to set it down so that it can dry and firm up a little bit. Because if I were to attach this right now, um, sometimes I even do um, like putting it over a form to make sure it, it firms up. Now it might only take like 10 or 15 minutes for this to firm up, um, but you wanna give it a little bit of time or you can rest it like this, just like T-shape on your table. So that way it's it's kind of drying in the shape that you want it. So kind of set up your, your shape. Um, I'm also going to, I'm gonna trim this down a little bit because I, I saw that when I'm going to attach this, I'm going to attach it like right here. So I'm going to make that mark and then I'm going to cut a little extra off. And of course, I was looking at that from a really weird angle. So I'm going to cut that so it's a little more straight. And then on the bottom, I'm going to cut that a little bit more straight. So it's a little bit more of a straight bottom there. So that way, when I'm ready to um, attach this, I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to let it get a little bit firmer. I want it to be almost as dry as my cylinder. It can be a little bit more, more damp. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. Okay, so that is. Okay, next step. Coil. Yeah, coil. So you're going to roll out a coil, and you pretty much are doing the same thing. 
Um, but now instead of starting with a, with a flat handle, you're gonna have a rounded handle. So I've got a chunk of clay here. I'm gonna make it about six to seven inches long. And when you're rolling it out, be thinking what shape, what size should a handle be? Like think about your favorite mugs, how thick is the handle? Um, it probably is gonna be a fairly thick coil. Okay, let's see. Um, gonna cut this off. Okay, so I've got fairly thick handle. And then just like before, I'm gonna run my sponge over this and this might you might have to kind of like i would usually kind of flatten it a little bit like flatten it on two sides so it's not totally round it's more like an oval and you know coils sometimes don't run roll out very evenly so you might have to just take a little bit of time i'm actually curving the whole sponge over the whole coil i'm going to do the same thing on the other side it is a little awkward to hold it up up like that so i'm just gonna Lay it down, run that over. I'm gonna flip it over, do the same thing, running my sponge over it, smoothing out with my fingers, any little inconsistencies. Um, if it's really lumpy, like this has like a wide space here, I might even trim that down a little bit. Or I might use the wide space as the top of my handle. Okay, so cut that down a little bit, but where it was widest I actually cut, so that's gonna be the top. And now I can look at adding my handle. I can figure out a good one, test it out gently, lovingly. Do you have enough space for your fingers? And then I'm gonna kind of pinch. This is a this is a nice little trick here. I'm gonna pinch a little bit to make a little flat, ovally shape. And that's where I'm gonna connect. I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. I'm gonna give it a little pinch. Just a little pinch. I don't want it to get too thin. And then I know that's gonna be my handle. Uh, when you're thinking about your handle shape, think about when you clean up mug, you know, sometimes you might like put it upside down. Um, you don't want your handle to be taller than your rim. You want the handle to be the same height or a little bit lower. So think about that. You also wanna make sure that it has enough room for how you, like, do you hold a mug with two fingers? Are you fancy? Do you hold a mug with three fingers, four fingers? Gotta make sure all your, your fingers can fit in there. So it might have to go out a little wider um there's no set width it's just up to you what you want i'm gonna let that dry in shape i'm gonna hurt there all right now here is the most traditional method which is pulling a handle all right so for this you need a bucket of water it helps to have a like a bigger container of water to do this unless you have to do this or you can do this at the sink with some um, some water running. Okay, so you're gonna get a chunk of clay. This is the one you definitely wanna watch. So, gonna get a chunk of clay, like so. And you're gonna roll it just at the bottom to form what's called a carrot. That is actually a term, a carrot. That's what they call it, um, because they want it to be more like pointed and a little bit thicker up here where you're gonna hold it. So it's like a, just, you're just getting it started here. And then this is what you're going to do. You are going to have a lot of water in your hand so that your hand provides some slide and you are going to pull the handle. All right, so this is what it is. You're gonna give it a little bit of pinch and pull. And you're allowed to giggle because it does look ridiculous. And slightly uncomfortable, let's just say milk and a cow. Um, you should see teapot um, instructions. They get even wilder. So I'm using all that moisture to just, I'm not pulling, like I'm not compressing too much. I'm just getting right up against the clay and using the sort of motion and the wetness to pull. So I'm gonna do that. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna grip too much here because if I grip too much here, then it's gonna pinch off and then the whole thing falls off and you have to start over. So, there we go. Um, I'm also turning it as I'm doing this and I'm notice I'm kind of straightening it out more on two sides and going a little bit looser on the side so I can get like kind of an oval shape. Now, if this looks difficult, it's because it does take a little bit of practice. 
Um, or if this looks just wildly uncomfortable for you, you don't have to use this method. But this is the traditional pulling handle method that people use for years. So when you get a handle that looks like it's a good length, see, look at that shape. That, that looks like a nice smooth handle. Um, it also is very messy. So if you like messy things, this is for you. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it off at the thick part. So if you can see, it's kind of a little bit thicker right there at the base and it's a little bit thinner down here. So this is gonna be my, my handle. And I can kind of adjust that a little bit. So I'm going to set this down on the table, just flat and cut it off. So I have this. I'm gonna have to get rid of my little finger marks later on, but I'm, first I gotta let it set up. So now this handle would go, and I could even kind of go straight. If I don't, I can either tuck it under or I can go straight because it is a little bit thicker there. So I'm gonna get it in shape and I'm gonna rest it there on the table in shape. And then I can decide later which, which handle I use because I made three, but in most cases, um, you would uh, let it set, just make one handle, let it set up, and then add it when it's a little bit drier. So you want to make sure that you keep this cylinder from drying out anymore, and you want to make sure that you let this handle dry out a little bit. So today, what I recommend is finish and refining your cylinder, wrap it up really good so it's not going to dry out any further because it needs to be still damp enough to receive the handle. And I'll talk about joining handles tomorrow. Um, but then I would say get some of your extra clay and practice handle making. Try one or more of these methods um, and just make some practice handles because it's going to take a little practice before you get one that is really good. And tomorrow we'll talk about joining them.